In the world of motorcycles, we're used to the high-pitched roar of gasoline engines, the quick revving climbs, the pure sensation of speed. Manufacturers race to create engines that are ever more powerful, lighter, and responsive, dominated by two, three, or four cylinder gasoline configurations. But in another corner of the automotive universe, there's an engine type synonymous with raw power, monstrous torque, and fuel efficiency, the diesel engine. But can the DNA of trucks and tractors ever truly merge with the soul of a motorcycle? Diesel engines have characteristics almost opposite to what most riders seek. Their vibrations are notoriously harsh. Their power band narrow and stuck in the low RPMs. Their weight substantial. And their sound. Well, let's just say it lacks the symphony of a sport bike's exhaust. Attempts to graft a diesel engine onto a motorcycle frame have existed. Just look at the Royal Enfield Taurus in India. A bike born from the need for super frugal transport but sacrificing comfort and performance. It was more a pragmatic solution than an engineering masterpiece. And herein lies the challenge. Could someone create a diesel motorcycle that wasn't just functional, but actually desirable? A diesel bike that was powerful, smooth, and maybe even luxurious. In the early 2000s, amidst Germany's renowned landscape of precision engineering and innovation, a company named Neander Motors harbored an ambition that sounded downright crazy to some. They didn't just want to build a diesel motorcycle. They aimed to craft a diesel masterpiece on two wheels, a luxury cruiser powered by diesel, but in a way nobody had truly conceived before. This wasn't merely about fuel economy. This was about conquering technical limitations and creating something utterly unique, a statement piece, a bold challenger to the status quo. The Neander team knew their primary enemy, vibration. The tremors from a large displacement parallel twin diesel could make a rider feel like they were sitting on a jackhammer, hardly the premium experience they envisioned. Conventional solutions like standard balancer shafts likely wouldn't be enough to tame the diesel beast they planned to unleash. They needed a breakthrough. And that breakthrough arrived in the form of an incredibly complex, yet elegant engineering idea twin, counter-rotating crankshafts. Picture this. Inside the Neander 1400 turbo diesel's engine block, with its actual displacement of 1340 cubic centimeters, though often rounded up to 1400, two massive pistons pump up and down in a parallel twin configuration. However, instead of connecting to a single crankshaft, like most engines, each piston drives its own dedicated crankshaft. Even wilder, these two crankshafts were engineered to spin in opposite directions. Why? Because the primary inertial forces generated by one piston and crankshaft assembly would be effectively counteracted or canceled out by the opposing forces from the second assembly moving the opposite way. It's a purely mechanical solution to kill vibration right at the source, an approach far more intricate and costly than just adding balancer shafts, but one that promised a level of smoothness unheard of in a diesel engine of this size. Furthermore, Neander didn't stop there. The engine was also fitted with a turbocharger and an intercooler. This was crucial to boost the power of the inherently lower revving diesel. The result was a torque figure absolutely brutal for a motorcycle data points to around 200 to 214 newton meters, roughly 147 to 158 pound-feet, available at an incredibly low 2,600 RPM. For comparison, many 1,000cc sport bikes only reached their peak torque much higher up the rev range. The horsepower itself landed around 100 to 112 horsepower, peaking at 4,200 RPM. With such a unique mechanical heart, Neander built a motorcycle around it, styled as a classic muscular cruiser. Its lines flow, featuring a large tank, a low seat, and wide handlebars. The build quality clearly reflected its premium target market, utilizing high-quality materials and components. However, there's no denying it. This machine is large and heavy, 
Various sources quote its dry weight figures significantly, ranging from around 270 kilograms up to 310 kilograms, approximately 595 to 683 pounds, depending on the final spec and source. This is not a bike for beginners or those seeking agility on tight corners. Riding the Neander 1400 is a truly different experience. The engine note is distinctly diesel, yet more muted and civilized thanks to that dual crankshaft engineering. There's no high RPM blast. Instead, you get an instantaneous wave of torque from the very bottom of the rev range. It feels like being pulled by a small locomotive every time you twist the throttle. Vibrations? They're still there, of course. Impossible to eliminate entirely, but significantly smoother than a conventional diesel of similar displacement. Neander successfully proved their engineering ambition yielded tangible results in relative comfort. But, like many ambitious tales, the Neander 1400 faced market realities. Advanced engineering came with an incredibly steep price tag. The Neander 1400 sold for figures reaching fantastical levels, reportedly around 140,000 USD back in its day. This drastically limited the pool of potential buyers. Who would spend supercar money on a diesel motorcycle? An unproven and extremely niche concept. Even though its torque was immense and its vibrations tamed, the bike remained heavy and had performance limitations at higher RPMs compared to gasoline bikes. The luxury cruiser market was perhaps more interested in the thundering sound of a V-twin or the established prestige of well-known brands. The Neander 1400 was an anomaly, a choice for the very few who truly appreciated its unique engineering and wanted something completely different from anything else on the road. Consequently, production of the Neander 1400 never reached large numbers, with reports suggesting only around 250 units were planned or built. It remained a niche, exotic, and rare product. The Neander 1400 turbo diesel will always be remembered as one of the most unique and ambitious motorcycles ever created. It's tangible proof that sometimes, in the automotive world, individuals or companies dare to think outside the box, even if the path is steep and the destination highly specific. It stands as a monument to German engineering ambition, a unique diesel rumble in a sea of gasoline screams, a rare legend on two wheels. <laughs>